Okay. So there's E3720 week 4 lecture 2. And in this lecture, we'll look at a design example of the Routh Horowitz criterion. So this lecture is hopefully going to be pretty short. So in class, I'll take this time to answer any questions. Uh, so let's look at skill assessment exercise 6.3 on page 320. The question is for a unity feedback system with forward transfer function given by g bar of s equals k times s plus 20 over s times s plus 2 times s plus 3 uh, determine the range of k for stability and before I look at the solution let's draw a picture in the sense here is our block diagram if you will so here is our G okay I'll just write it in and if you recall your lab one we actually had a second order polynomial in the denominator for our feedback system in that lab so you're actually able to use uh, the quadratic uh, roots expression to find the range of K in this case uh, if you look at the closed tube transfer function so our H, so if you call this H bar, so H is basically G over 1 plus G. And you can see we basically have a third order polynomial. So it is wise to use the Routh Horowitz criterion to solve this problem and forget about guessing the range of K. For practical systems, you're not going to have such nice numbers and you just can't, right? Just forget it. It's k times s plus 20 over, so we multiply and divide by s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. It is times s squared plus some other root, uh, plus product of the roots, uh, plus two multiple k times s plus 20. There you go. So if you rewrite this properly, the denominator polynomial of a closed loop transfer function is basically going to be s cubed plus 5s squared plus k plus 6 times s uh, let's see, plus 20k. So there you have it. And we're basically going to apply the Routh Horowitz criterion to our denominator polynomial. So let's write out the Routh table. So you basically have, let's see, I'm just going to make sure that I didn't make an arithmetic error. Uh, 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 yeah, looking good. So here's the Routh table. Sorry, let me save this first because I don't want a repeat of last lecture. So you have S cubed, S squared, so the Routh table, S s to the 0. So you have 1, 5, k plus 6, 20k, and then zeros. So this entry here, let me see if I can, now nah, let me put s to the 0 here. All right. So this entry b1 is going to be uh, negative of the determinant. So let me just do this. Let's call this B1. B1 is negative of the determinant 1, 5, k plus 6, 20k over 5, negative 20k minus 5k minus 30 over 5, which is going to be, uh, let's see, minus 20, that's a 15. So you have minus 15k minus 30 over 5. So this will basically, when we factor out of 15, you get a negative 3. So let me just step by step. Negative 3, you factor out of 15, you get a k minus 2. So you basically get, uh, let's see, negative 3k. So you get 6 minus 3k. Uh, let's see. 
over 5. Hopefully, I didn't make an arithmetic error. Minus 5k minus 30. So that's a 15k minus 30, 30 minus. So you factor out a 15. Yeah. So this looks good. So this is a 6 minus 3k right there. And then this is b1. So b2, aha, is 0. Okay. Because you have zeros here which is nice and this fellow s0 is going to be the determinant here divide by this but the negative sign the negative sign fans cancel so you just get 20k okay now for stability uh, know the right half plane poles which implies no sign changes in the first column and this is actually a good example of a problem I can ask on the exam in the sense it's a very simple route table right and you can see that it's very easy to find the range of k as we're going to do shortly it's just like one more step but try to I mean there's no way you can solve this or get I mean maybe for it's, it's very difficult to solve this using a calculator right for guessing and checking the range of k this case though, this implies that you want 6 minus 3k to be positive and you want 20k to be positive. So this implies k has to be less than 2. This implies k has to be greater than 0. Therefore, the range of k is k between 0 and 2. And you can check this in Simulink like we checked, I mean like we did in lab 1. Uh, but again, in the case of lab 1, you had a second order polynomial, so we're able to use the quadratic formula. In this case, you had a third order. I mean, there is a formula for finding the roots of a third order polynomial. However, what if this was like fourth order or fifth order? Again, uh, like I said before, that's it. We're done with the lecture. This lecture is very short. So in class, I'm going to take this time to assign probably a problem to do and then go around and answer questions. All right. We're done with this lecture.